Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. It's time for a new monitor recommendation video, something we haven't done on the channel for a while. With Nvidia having just launched new GeForce RTX 30 series GPUs, I think it's a good time to go through some monitors that complement the performance on offer from these next generation cards. I'll be primarily talking about the RTX 3080 in this video, but there will be some mention of the flagship RTX 3090, as well as the upcoming RTX 3070. Where this video differs from our previous monitor recommendations is that in our general best of content, we go through all monitor categories and price points, giving the best choices in each one. But in this video, we're sticking to monitors that will really allow Nvidia's Ampere GPUs to shine. So this means more of a focus on the high end with high resolutions and super high refresh rate displays. The idea being that if you're thinking of upgrading to a new and very fast GPU this generation, here are some of the monitors that will allow you to take full advantage of that GPU now, while also having some headroom for future upgrades. With that in mind, we're going to focus on 1440p, 4K and ultra-wide monitors today with a brief look at 1080p towards the end. So let's get into it. If you're buying a new high-end GPU this generation, it's the perfect time to get a high refresh 1440p display if you haven't made the jump yet. Particularly in the high-end market, there are a ton of great options to choose from, which will be perfect for the graphics performance on offer this year and into the future. At 1440p, there's really two ways you can go. If you're after something decent but don't want to blow the bank, today's high-end 1440p 144Hz monitors are a great choice. But if you want the best of the best to really squeeze every last drop out of something like the RTX 3080, then I'd be leaning towards 1440p 240Hz, which has hit the market this year in a big way. We'll start with the 144Hz options. If you're buying an RTX 3080, you can expect to hit pretty close to 144fps consistently in today's games using ultra settings at 1440p. You might not get all the way there in titles like Horizon Zero Dawn, but 144Hz is a great buy for the now. And if you're looking to spend $400 to $500, which is where most of the best 1440p 144Hz monitors sit, here's what I'd be looking at. While the LG 27G850 did come out last year, it's still one of my favourite choices for this resolution and refresh rate. You'll get excellent 4 millisecond response times at 144Hz with strong performance throughout the refresh range. So even if you're more in the 100fps range, the 27G850 delivers limited blur or overshoot with adaptive sync enabled. This is coupled with great colour quality, including 95% P3 coverage, excellent viewing angles, and a nice flat panel. The major downside here is the contrast ratio, which is mediocre and won't excite those that like to play games in dark environments. The 27G850 will typically set you back $500, but there's a few other options with similar performance if you don't want to spend that much or have other features in mind. The 27GL83A, for example, offers similar response times to the 27G850, but cuts out wide gamut support in favour of just sRGB coverage. That's still going to give you a great experience for gaming, but you'll shave off at least $100 to the price tag. I'd also be on the lookout for the 27GN850, which is a 2020 refresh of the GL850 and might be a better deal in your region. Another option that's gathered a lot of interest this year is the Dell S2721 DGF. We're yet to test this display and hope to do so soon, but it uses the same panel as the 27G850, so by all reports, it performs roughly the same. One reason to get this over the 27G850 might be its slightly higher refresh rate of 165Hz, which is offered at the same $500 price point. If you have more money to spend and want the best 1440p experience today, then you should consider a 240Hz option. A GPU like the RTX 3080, and especially the RTX 3090, can often push frame rates above 144fps at 1440p, examples being games like Death Stranding, F1 2020, and Doom Eternal, plus the usual suite of competitive titles like Rainbow Six Siege. To many people, the main refresh rate difference between 144Hz and 240Hz is going to be small, but after a few weeks using a 240Hz display, you'll notice the improved responsiveness and motion clarity. But there's more to buying 240Hz than just the refresh rate. 240Hz displays also usually come with better response times at both 240Hz and lower refreshes, which leads to less blur, making them better even while gaming at 144Hz or thereabouts. 240Hz is also more future-proof. This sort of 1440p display is perfect for not just an RTX 3080 today, but also the next few generations of GPUs. 
With that said, there aren't a ton of 1440p 240Hz options on the market right now. The best that I've tested so far is the Samsung Odyssey G7, available in both 32 and 27 inch sizes. At $700 to $800 depending on which model you choose, the G7 is quite a bit better than the 144Hz options we've been talking about, so let's work through the benefits. Response times are faster. The G7 offers a 3 millisecond greater gray experience, which is about 25% better than the 144Hz options we've just talked about. This is combined with that higher refresh rate, and excellent performance across the refresh range, to deliver a stunning gaming experience. It's also a VA panel, meaning we're getting a superior contrast ratio, and with Samsung's tuning, no dark level smearing. Many of the same color benefits are present here too, like a wide color gamut, and even limited semi-HDR functionality. With that said, while I love what the G7 offers in terms of response times and refresh, there are some weaknesses. I'm not a fan of the 1000R curvature, which is very curved, although your opinion on that may vary. My review unit also had some noticeable issues with uniformity, and while I didn't personally experience flickering problems, other buyers have, so it's something to be aware of. It may be a bit of a lottery as to whether you get a good unit or not. If the Odyssey G7 doesn't take your fancy, then I would suggest waiting for some upcoming models to hit the market, which could be as early as the next few months. There's the Acer XV272UX as one option that will bring 1440p and 240Hz together in an IPS monitor, along with stuff like the EVE Spectrum QHD 240Hz. I expect more models to be announced soon, including others with VA panels. We're also set to finally get 32-inch 1440p high refresh IPS monitors later this year, such as the ASUS ROG Swift PG329Q with its 175Hz refresh rate. That's something to keep an eye out for as this monitor size hasn't been blessed with the best high-end options over the last few years, Samsung Odyssey aside. With the launch of Ampere, I suspect a lot of PC gamers will be considering an upgrade to a 4K display for the first time. While the RTX 2080 Ti was a pretty good 4K 60Hz gamer, the RTX 3080 really opens the doors for 4K high refresh, with performance in a lot of titles pushing close to or over 100fps using ultra settings. That's where the benefits of a high refresh 4K display really start to shine, with smoothness that far exceeds 60Hz panels that generally I can't recommend for gaming. It's really a bit of a beast at this resolution, so let's work through some options. If you don't want to totally bust the bank wide open, I'd be looking at the Nixius NX EDG 274K, which of the limited selection of budget 4K 144Hz monitors we've tested, offers the best performance. We're getting a 6 millisecond response time experience, which is sufficient at 144Hz with limited smearing, although it does require some overdrive tuning at lower refresh rates. Thankfully, Nixius provide a lot of flexibility to do that with 128 different overdrive modes. The reason I choose this over other cheaper 4K 144Hz monitors from companies like Viotech with the GFI 27QXA and Acer with the XV273K and XB273K is its support for DSC or display stream compression. This means that with a new GPU like the RTX 2080 Ti or RTX 3080, you'll be able to run 4K 144Hz over a single cable with full adaptive sync functionality. Other budget options require dual display port cables which is annoying to set up and doesn't perform as well. The NX EDG 274K is available for $750 through Newegg, which is a great deal, and while it may not perform quite as well as something like the ASUS XG27UQ, it's otherwise similar and costs over $150 less. Great color quality here, wide gamut panel, IPS viewing angles, acceptable contrast. The only main downside is the Nixius monitor has a pretty crap design and build quality that's more befitting of a cheap $200 monitor, but the panel itself performs well, which for some people is all that matters. I would also strongly advise people look out for the LG 27GN950. At $800, this monitor looks to be quite a bit better than the EDG 274K, although we haven't tested it yet. In addition to an LG Nano IPS panel, which should elevate response times to the level of the 27GL850 but at 4K 144Hz, the 27GN950 also brings semi-HDR functionality and still packs DSC for single cable 144Hz. 
I'm not a huge fan of recommending products that I haven't tested, but at the very least, this is something to look out for. It is on sale now, and we're hoping to get one for review soon. Later in the year, we'll get the EVE Spectrum 4K 144Hz model as well, which is another to look out for. As for 4K 144Hz with true HDR functionality, well, in my opinion, now is not a great time to buy one of those monitors. Your only options of those currently on the market are the Acer Predator X27 and Asus ROG Swift PG27UQ, which are using somewhat outdated technology right now. In particular, the lack of DSC with these panels means we're only getting 4K up to 98Hz with 10-bit HDR or 120Hz with 8-bit color. 144Hz is inaccessible outside of Chroma subsampling, which is not a good solution and something I'd hesitate to recommend given a price tag well over $1,000. We were supposed to get new 4K 144Hz HDR monitors this year, such as the ASUS PG27UQX with mini-LED, and the Acer Predator X32, which brings HDR to a 32-inch panel, but for some reason, both haven't launched yet, which is disappointing. Rather than potentially blowing $1,500 on a monitor with last-gen technology, at this point I'd wait. Not ideal for new buyers of an RTX 3080, but in this price category, I'd only want to recommend the best, and right now I don't think I can do that with the X27 or the PG27UQ. That's not to say there are no HDR monitor options I'd recommend. There is one, although it comes with a bunch of caveats, and that's the LG CX 48-inch. This is more of a TV, but it does offer a 4K, 120Hz OLED panel with per-pixel local dimming, offering an outstanding HDR experience with deep rich blacks and excellent contrast. Response times in the 1 millisecond range are also appealing, as is the inclusion of HDMI 2.1. With NVIDIA's new RTX 30 series also supporting HDMI 2.1, this means we are getting proper 120Hz with variable refresh at 4K with the combination of the LG CX and an RTX 30 series GPU, provided LG's update to properly enable this functionality goes smoothly. As for those caveats, well, this is quite a large display. Not everyone will want to use a 48-inch TV as a gaming monitor. Not everyone will have space for the TV itself or to sit far enough away. It's also an OLED, so there are some burn-in concerns with desktop applications, and it features an automatic brightness limiter, which can be annoying in some situations. I'd much rather the CX 48-inch over one of the 43-inch 4K monitors I've reviewed, though, none of which have impressed me at all, and its price tag of $1,500 is no worse than any of the 27-inch HDR monitors on the market. As you might have felt throughout this section, it is somewhat of a waiting game with 4K high refresh displays as it seems like we're right at the start of good options becoming available. For many people, this may mean waiting, especially for an HDR capable monitor, but given the price tag for these displays starts at $750 or so, I think it's worth getting something good over settling for something with compromised features and I definitely would not recommend anyone get a 60Hz 4K display in 2020 for gaming. You're just sacrificing too much motion clarity with that low of a refresh rate. Ultra-wide monitors are also going to be of interest for a lot of RTX 30 series buyers, especially as 3440x1440 high refresh is now a true reality in terms of graphics performance. Anytime a GPU can offer high frame rates at 4K, ultra-wide gamers perk up knowing they too will be seeing performance that basically maxes out their 144Hz display. The RTX 3080 and RTX 3070 I suspect will both be excellent choices here. There are a lot of ultra-wide monitors I think are worth considering right now, so let's breeze through them. If you just want something 3440x1440 at 144Hz that's affordable, look no further than the Xiaomi Mi Curve 34. This monitor does only feature mid-range performance, so it won't blow you away with what it's offering, but at a price tag that's often far lower than competing monitors, it's hard to ignore from a value perspective. So if you want to go ultra-wide, you've just bought an RTX 3080 or are planning too soon and don't have a ton of cash left over for a new monitor, the Xiaomi Mi Curve 34 will suit you just fine. For higher-end buyers with a bit of cash to splurge, I'd be recommending the LG 34GN850, which right now is the best performing 3440x1440 IPS monitor. Featuring LG's Nano IPS technology, we're getting a 4 millisecond response time experience that's consistent across the entire refresh range. No need for overdrive tweaking, just set and forget. Unlike the Xiaomi option and other VA-based ultrawides in this market, there is no dark level smearing with the 34G and 850 either, so overall response times are really solid, and that means next to no ghosting or smearing. 
And on top of that, we're getting a neat bonus of a 160 hertz refresh rate, just that little bit higher than 144 hertz, which will help given the power of the RTX 3080 and 3090. At $900, this isn't the cheapest display, but that's to be expected given how it performs overall, and I think it's a great way to complement a high-end PC setup. Excellent color performance here, wide color gamut, great viewing angles, and as I said, outstanding performance. The only major weakness here is the contrast, which isn't as good as VA monitors, but despite this, I think the overall package is too good to go past. Another step above this is the LG 38GN950, which brings most of the benefits of the 34GN850 to a larger panel size, 38 inches with a 3840x1600 resolution. We haven't tested this monitor yet, but we have tested the previous gen version, the 38GL950G, and found it to perform really well. The 38GN950 offers a 160Hz refresh rate, semi-HDR functionality, and nano IPS technology, so I'm expecting good things here. It does, though, have a high price tag of 1600 US dollars, which won't be for everyone. I'd also be considering the Samsung Odyssey G9, another monitor we're hoping to test soon, as a super ultra wide option with a hefty $1700 price tag. Flickering issues once again may crop up here, so beware, but if it's anything like the Odyssey G7, the gaming experience should be impressive. Then there's also the ultra wide HDR options like the Acer Predator X35, but with an eye watering price tag near $2,000, it may not be the most attractive buy for everyone, even if you're buying a high end GPU. I want to close out this video with a brief exploration of 1080p monitors. I don't think buying a new 1080p display to accompany your RTX 30 series GPU is the wisest choice, given these GPUs really shine at higher resolutions, and trust me, 1440p is way better than 1080p in most instances. So if you are even briefly considering 1080p, I strongly suggest opting for a 1440p or 4K display for these new GPUs instead, especially if you're interested in something high end. With that said, there is a small niche of gamers that will buy an RTX 3080 or even an RTX 3090 for high frame rate, low latency competitive gaming. We're talking people kitted out with overclocked Core i9-10900Ks, the best peripherals on the market, latency optimized setups, and all of that. If you fall into that group and you want to be pushing the best possible frame rates with the lowest input lag and best motion clarity for competitive gaming, I have a recommendation for you. The 1080p monitor I'd recommend for high-end gaming right now is the ASUS ROG Swift PG259QN. This is a truly outstanding 1080p display, offering the best response times we've seen from an IPS panel with an incredible 360Hz refresh rate. The fluidity and responsiveness of this panel is unlike anything I've seen, and with elite factory calibration as well, it's hard to ignore this display for competitive gaming. At $700, it's not a cheap display, but like I said, I don't think 1080p is a wise choice for most RTX 30 series buyers anyway. But if you want speed and nothing but speed, the 360Hz refresh rate on offer here is elite, and this panel delivers excellent performance. That's pretty much it for this video, really. Lots of monitor recommendations for you with more of a focus on the high end than we usually do in these videos. In some categories, it might make more sense to wait it out a couple of months, but in other cases, lots of great options to complement a new GPU purchase this holiday season. We also talked a little bit about some monitors that I'd be on the lookout for that I haven't reviewed yet. Hopefully I'll be getting some of those into review soon. So now is always a good time to subscribe for more monitor testing. If you also want to support our monitor testing and allow us to buy more monitors to test, then please go sign up to our Patreon page. Links are in the description below. You'll get access to our calibrated display profiles, our Discord chat if you want to come and ask me questions about monitors, behind the scenes videos, all that sort of thing is over there. So thanks for watching. Hope you learned what you needed to learn and I'll catch you in the next one.